And we're gonna, yeah, Captain Morgan's, if you wanna wait, grab one. 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Here we go. So, taking it nice and easy. I know it might be a little early for some of us that have not had to set an alarm lately. <laughs> Those of you that have little ones at home, we still have an alarm. They are the alarm. So your captain is all about lower body stability with upper body mobility. Goblet squat. You can use that same weight, find a kettlebell. Squatting as low as what's comfortable for you. And pushing through the heels, coming back up to standing. Inhaling as you lower, push the knees out. Exhale, come up to standing. Maybe you just stay at the bottom of this. Ugh. And do a little shift left and right. Small little shifts. Thing is, the longer I stay, the more likely I am to get stuck down there. <laughs> and inchworms. If you don't have a lot of space, just inchworm out and then inchworm back up. This will get us warmed up. Oh, going out, maybe letting the hands slide forward, depending on what type of flooring you have, coming up to standing in between. Locking the hands out, I always say, until that shirt starts to shake. Last one. And your reverse line reach. So you'll alternate sides. If right leg goes back and you do have a can of soup or small dumbbell reaching up and over. Oh, feels so nice. Switch hands with the weight, switching legs. That back knee goes down. Squeeze that same loop for a little bit more opening in the front part of that hip. Teeter totters. Let's alternate. Or if you want to stay on one side, stay on one side. Trying to keep the hands, or I like to interlace my hands. I think it helps me to keep my arms then more in line with my ears. Energy through that swing leg heel. And coming to the floor, breathing. Place the head on the back side of the hands. Inhale for four. Pause. And then try to exhale for eight. And then pause. Repeat. I'm getting toasty. So don't just raise the knee, lift through the foot. Rotate to that same side, retrace, and step down. Woo! Goblet squats. Uh, your choice, and even, oh, oh, sorry, Nikki, I know you're in between my, your living room. <laughs> if you do have a wall and you wanted to come down and just stay here, oh, that would be so lovely. 
Squatting down, you can raise or extend the legs, or you can just stay down here. Like I said, give it a little pry. So push one elbow in, rotate the torso gently to the other side. Oh, you should just stay here for a whole minute. Oh, and set the bell down or your weight down. Inchworms. And again, only going out as far as you can without the hips sinking below the shoulders. Last one here. And grabbing your can of soup. Maybe a can of beer, no judgments. Reverse lunge reach. Again, whatever side has the weight, that's the leg that will go back. Reaching up and over. <sighs> Again, when that back knee goes down, squeeze that same side glute. <sighs> And teeter totters. And if you stayed on one side, switch sides. If you didn't, let's continue to alternate. Try and have that swing leg nice and straight, energy through that heel. I don't care how far you hinge forward. I care more about the line that you have from fingertip to swing my heel. And a crocodile breathing. Maybe you inhale for four. Maybe you only exhale for four. Try to extend your exhale as long as you can. And pressing body up. All right. Here's my timer. <clears throat> Folks, it's Wednesday. I have my Kiwis on. <laughs> uh, next we have our bird dog. This is where we're in our six-point stance. Opposite limbs going opposite directions. And we have our palm to touch the knee, reach opposites, forearm to the knee, elbow to the knee, and then we reach opposites. Our high plank row hold, find a weight, uh, if you want. And we're gonna be in your high plank right here, row, and we're just gonna hold with the weight right by the hip. Uh, we have our tornadoes, and again, your choice of a weight, but uh, if you have something, I encourage you to use it. Whether it's a kettlebell, a dumbbell, Ugh. a sack of potatoes. I had somebody use a sack of potatoes once. Uh, our tornadoes here with a small pause at each end point. This week, we're going to try and lift the feet, or maybe this week, you are um, adding the weight for the first time. Uh, we have push-ups, one hand on the kettlebell, one hand off. We'll side shuffle over, one hand on, one hand off. Bridges. This week we're going to try single leg. For those of you that have knee issues and you don't want to do single leg, don't. Keep it as a bilateral bridge. The bell is going to be just overhead or your weight. Not overhead, excuse me, over the chest. Okay, so we're going to be... Holding onto the bell here securely. Make sure that your fingers have made contact with one another around the horns of the bell. 
Single leg, raising and lowering. And we will be set up for pullovers then. Pullovers is where we start above the chest. And we're gonna reach the bell over the head. Maybe it touches the floor, maybe it doesn't. And back over to the chest. So we're gonna start with our bird dog here. Actually, just keep your weights close. So come down to your six point stance, two hands, two knees, two feet, and we'll start with right hand, left heel reaching in opposite directions and just stay on that same side for the whole 30 seconds. Here we go, folks. And again, thanks for joining me. Maybe if I can hit start. There we go. So reaching opposite directions, palm and knee touch, opposites, forearm and knee. Opposites, elbow to knee, opposites. We do three small circles with those limbs in both directions. And then again, palm to knee, reach opposites, forearm to knee, reach opposites, elbow to knee, reach opposites, and the circles. Make sure you're extending out the crown of the head and out that heel. And high plank row hold. Let's go left hand down. Right hand holds on to your weight. So making sure that shoulders are dropped down away from the ears. You're trying to leave your hips nice and level. That right hip or whatever side the weight is in is going to want to try and open. Fight like hell, folks. Squeeze that right cheek. Shaking is appropriate. So it's breathing. And tornado, so finding a weight that's good for you. And if you need to, keep the feet on the ground. If not, take them off the ground. Challenge yourself a little bit. If your feet are off the ground, try not to let those knees bicycle. That when you rotate, lower body rotates. Uh-uh. Keep those inner thighs hugged together. You can imagine squeezing a Pilates ball or a yoga block. Push up. So place the kettlebell on its side. One hand on the bell, one hand on the ground, and push up. You will side shuffle over, other hand on the bell, push up. Folks, I don't care how low you go, as long as from head to tail is nice and flat. With no hyperextension of the spine or rounding of the back. Yeah. Bridges, so take that kettlebell. Firmly hold on to that above the chest. And let's go left leg down, right legs, raising and lowering, along with the hips. So bringing the hips down, maybe until the fabric of your pants touch the ground, don't rest and come back up. And you're set up for pullovers. I do want you to try and keep your low back in contact with the floor. So bringing your feet out a little bit, maybe have the toes up towards the ceiling so you can dig those heels into the ground, turn on those hamstrings. And when that bell goes up overhead, try not to let the ribs flare. Five seconds. Set your weight down and back to bird dog. So right hand stays down. So left hand reaches and right heel reaches behind you, reaching opposite directions. Palm to knee touch, opposites. 
forearm to knee, opposite, elbow to knee, opposite, and three small, like ten small size circles in each direction. And repeat, palm to knee, forearm, elbow, extend, crown of the head, left fingertips and right heel. Right. High plank row hold. Left side hold. <clears throat> the weight. Right hand will stay down. And bring it up. Holding that right close to the hip. Lock that right shoulder down. <clears throat> Sways both cheeks. Lift the abdominals. Lengthen through the heels. Shake and breathe. Maybe throw a smile in there. And tornadoes. <clears throat> so if you need to keep the feet on the ground, do so. Otherwise, take them off the ground. Small little pause at each end point. <clears throat> Keep lifting through the sternum. And push ups. Placing the belt on one side. And whatever hand is on the floor, I want you to make sure. You're pushing that palm into the ground, especially the knuckle of your index finger, where the finger meets the hand. Notice how that focus may change your push-up. Bridges. Right leg will stay down. Left leg extended long. Now raising and lowering the hips. And that swing leg for extra fun. Drop the shoulders away from the ears. Literally push that right heel into the ground as the hips rise. Pullovers, walk your feet away from the glutes just a bit. Again, heels are digging into the ground. Weight over the chest. Hold on to that weight, folks. Squish that low back into the floor. And weight goes above the head. If it doesn't touch the floor, that is okay. If it does, that is okay. Inhale, the weight goes over. Exhale, pull. And again, focus on not letting those ribs flare out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Quick water break if you need one. Let's see. Reno, good morning. Heather, Nikki. Okay. This week, with our lovely little bounce. Um, bouncing doesn't feel good. Don't do it. We're actually going to hold a weight this week. And when I'm going to say turn, I actually want you to rotate 90 degrees. Uh, you choose. Whether you turn right, turn left. You can do two turns left, three turns right every time. I don't care. Uh, but we are going to hold a weight this time, turning 90 degrees. Then we have our small little squat where our legs are together. Knees, feet, inner thighs, everything. And we're going to pass that kettlebell around the shins. If this doesn't feel good, 
on the knees, stand up and do it. And you'll just pass the kettlebell around the hips here. Uh, standing wraps. I guess you could do this with a dumbbell. It might be a little awkward to <laughs> hand off. But this is the one uh, where it's outside the face. Okay? Maybe outside the shoulder even. And switch. And it comes up to the outside of the other one. There is allowed to be some upper body movement. Okay? You kind of have to. Uh, but I do want your feet and legs planted into the floor. Standing wraps. And then we're going to go single arm swings this week, or depending on what weight you have. If you want to do two-handed, do two-handed. Otherwise, we're going to go single arm swings, um, 30 seconds, staying on one side. And then repeat. So find your kettlebell, and we're going to start with our little bounce, and Simon says turn. We turn 90 degrees. Here we go. So kettlebells at, oh yeah, you guys are solid. Here we go. And bounce. Turn. 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 And smile, because we're dead. And small squat. So again, you can just be standing and wrapping the kettlebell around the hips. Or if you can't, legs together and we're wrapping around the shins. Take your time. This does not have to be fast. Lifting through the abdominals, pulling them up and in, switch directions. Try not to just let this go into your quads. Then I want you to load those hamstrings, folks. And our standing wraps. So, when the kettlebell comes up to just outside the shoulder, that wall, meaning your lat and hand, make sure that is solid. And make sure you're not hitting the, maybe like the heel of the hand or banging it into the thumb, the pad of the thumb. That's a nice little easy catch. And then you add some off and you throw the bell. Maybe apply it. Yeah. All right, swings. Let's go right in, swing. If you don't want to do singles, don't. Reminding yourself to stand tall. That wrist hits the inner thigh, high in the groin. Breathing is good. Back to the beginning with your lovely little bounce. Get turn. 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 Small little legs together, feet together, squat. And wrap that bell with control around the shins. And switch your direction. And again, start firing up those hamstrings. Extend out your sternum. 
not hyperextending. Pull the abs in. Standing racks. So this time, if you, if you feel comfortable adding a little ump with the hand that catches the weight. So it actually throws it a little bit. Instead of just using the hand that has the handle to pull the bell across the body, give it a little ump. And swings, left arm this time, whatever arm you didn't do last, making sure there's one foot space between you and the bell, and hike it. So even though we may have the bell only on one side, make sure you're hinging evenly through both legs. The shoulders are trying to be square, mostly square. And set the bell down. Whew. Quick water. And last section here. Oops. Almost had us going for 45. All right, our first exercise. <sighs> Reverse lunge, keeping the bell in the rack position. We're gonna do this four times. Uh, so we hit each side twice. So for all five exercises, we're gonna try and stay on left side first. Right, left, right. Okay, one, two, three, six exercises, sorry. First one is our reverse lunge. Kettlebell stays in the half rack position. Next one, single leg RDL. Bell will stay in the left hand. Uh, right leg will go down. If you don't want to do single leg, don't. Keep two legs down. Um, squats. Half rack, or well, actually we're going to be in the full rack position, but weight only in the one side. Uh, going right into our left arm overhead press. Uh, lunge row. Actually, let's change it to our bent over row. Uh, as much as I don't like these, I want to make myself practice them. So we're going to be here, feet roughly hip width apart with that. And we're just going to have the bell on one side and row. And our chest press, where we're lying on the ground uh, like a bench press and just pressing up towards the ceiling. One thing I want to add, folks, so about your overhead press. Um, when you do this, I'm going to come to kneeling so that you can see the top of my hand. So, right now, I can wave to, well, no neighbors, but neighbors to the side of me. Then when you have that overhead press, okay, there is that external rotation. And then we always have talked about you can wave to the person across from you. So if you look at the bell right now, if I were to look up, I see iron above my head. I want you to um, not externally rotate so far, that you're gonna be more here. So I'm almost like able to wave at like a diagonal so that this is on. So if something were to happen with the weight over my head, it's now not, the iron is not over my head here, it is more slightly off to the side. Okay, so it's like, I want you to think about maybe halfway between here and here, that fist is more there so that the bell is outside the head. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so we're gonna start half rack position, reverse lunge. Bell stays on the left side. And you'll alternate legs for which side you reverse lunge. Here you go, folks. So, reverse lunge, back knee goes down. You do not have to touch the ground, unless you want to be like a lovely overachiever. Just don't rest there. 
Watch that front knee. That it is tracking toes two through five. That we are not collapsing in towards the midline. Single leg or yell. Bell stays in the left hand. Right leg down. And just like our teeter totters or our hinges in the first part of damp, straight line, head to heel. I want energy through that left foot. Just staying with the right leg down. And squat. So bring that bell up to your rack position. Pretend like there's another weight in your right hand. Inhale as we lower. Exhale as you press. If you need to hold this in a goblet position, do so. Knees go out in the direction of your toes. I think about pushing my knees out on the way down and on the way up. And overhead press. So yeah, this is where lotion, if you had it on your hands before, it's not good. Reminding yourself, inhale as you pull the bell down. Exhale as you press. I like to exhale like a letting air out of the bike tire. That way I'm not just Okay, going all at once. Inhale, pull the bell down. Exhale as you press. And one's row, or rows. So, bell stays in the left hand. Feet roughly hip width apart. Hinge forward, thumbless fret, and row. So load up those hamstrings. If this does not feel good, you can always go into the lunge rope like we did last week. Try and keep those shoulders nice and level. Elbow going straight up to the ceiling. And chest press on your back. I want you to dig those heels into the ground. Bells on the left side. And press. So I like to keep my feet maybe halfway between feet flat on the floor and fully extended. Toes up maybe. Heels in, hamstrings on. Try and keep that right shoulder on the ground. And second side. Reverse lunge. Bell stays in the right hand, half rack position. So I want you to think about that right elbow coming towards the ribs. Try not to let it flare out in front of you or out to the side. Back knee goes down, squeeze that back glute. Take your time, folks. And single leg deadlift. Thumbless grip, right hand, left leg down. And again. So remember, you control how fast that bell reaches towards the floor. Your heel is your leader, your swing leg. And squat. So bring that bell up to the rack position. 
Let's pretend like we have one in the other hand. And inhale as you lower. When you stand tall, make sure you use those. Think about the quads, legs locking out, squeezing those glutes. So you may have a light enough weight here that where you don't feel like you have to give me that hop at the bottom. Pretend like it's 100 pounds. Right hand, overhead press. And two, and one. Trying to get a straight line up and a straight line down. And I want you to think legs, 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 legs. Okay? Lower body stability so that I have something solid to press against or press from. And your row. Thumb must grip if you can. I like to keep my other arm, unless it's a super heavy weight, up. on my abdominals, my other hand, reminding them to be pulling up and in. Try not to let that right shoulder creep higher or lower than the left. And five seconds, we'll make our way to our back for our supine chest press, right side. And again, somewhere between legs being fully extended and feet flat. Dig those heels into the ground. So pretend like you're gonna pull those heels towards the glutes. That'll help fire up the back side. Yeah, back to left side. Half rack position, reverse lunge. So alternate legs. And think about stepping back, back knee lowers. And again, being conscious of what that front knee is doing. Reminding yourself that you don't have to put yourself on a tight wire, meaning your feet don't need to be in line with one another. Yeah, single leg, RDL. Right leg down, left hand. Holds the bell. We do want energy through that swing arm, the side that does not have the weight. So maybe it's making a fist. Does not have to be clenched. I just want it engaged. Think about your triceps pulling towards the lats. And squat. Clean that bell up to your rack position. Other hand comes with it. Inhales, we lower. Just a slight pause at the bottom of your squat, wherever that is. So, get ready for a duck punch when you're standing tall, ladies and gentlemen.
as straight a line as I can up and down. Abs, glutes, quads. And your row. If you want to change this into a lunge row, do so. And if it feels better to keep your feet together, do so. If you like hip width apart, go right ahead. I just want those hamstrings engaged, folks. So even though more of the weight is shifted into our heels, I still maintain contact with the floor, with the balls of my feet, and even the toes. Last one, chest press. So again, feet are halfway in between legs being fully extended or flat on the floor. Dig those heels in. Punch the ceiling. And back to the top, right side. Three minutes of work. Clean the bell, reverse lunge. So again, step, back knee comes down. So when you go up to standing, think of that front leg pushing into the ground as you rise up. You can still push off of that back foot. But I want you to focus on the front leg doing most of the work. Single leg, RDL. Thumbless grip, right hand, left leg down. Send out right heel and begin. Again, what's that left hand doing? So play it, making a fist. That tricep is reaching towards the lat, helping the shoulder blade to be depressed or down the back. Keeping shoulders away from the ears. And squat, rack position. And again, knees going out to the corners of the room. Hups. On the way down and the way up. So I imagined squatting with a T-band, one of those green, blue, or black bands that we put around the knees. Make that band stretch. Left hand, or excuse me, right hand overhead press. Then three, two, and one. Inhale as you pull down. Exhale as you press. Legs locked out. Think about the pinky side. Feel the hand pressing up. And row. Row, row, row your belt. Right hand row, whether you're in a lunge or a bent over position. Pulling those abdominals towards the spine. Elbow rising towards the ceiling. And last one, chest press. At 
halfway, extended legs, toes up, heels digging in. So brace those abdominals. Maybe you even give them a little tough love yourself. Okay, give your stomach a nice little, uh, the lower you want. Last eight. And bring your bell down safely. Nice work, ladies and gentlemen. Nice work. All right. So, if you have some time and want to stretch for a minute, let's do so. Um, if you don't have time, thanks for playing. But uh, otherwise, let's get a little, uh, let's start with a downward dog. Let's say hello, hamstrings. Okay. Uh, so, I don't care how close your feet are to your hands, how close your heels are to the ground, but I do care that you're pushing evenly through both hands uh, and allowing your chest to go towards the toes. Go ahead and walk your dog here. And you can hold each side as long as you need to because our body is nice and warm. Push, especially that index finger, knuckle, where it meets the hand. Push that into the ground. And the pad underneath the thumb. Push that into the ground. Get a lovely little armpit stretch. And then in this downward dog position, I want your left hand to reach towards your right ankle. Maybe you can even grab onto it. That is fine. And a little bit of rotation. So if right or if left hand, you can even grab onto the shin or the calf. It doesn't have to be the ankle. Uh, kind of pull yourself, rotate, so that left shoulder is going to come underneath right. And then place left hand down. Right, oh, right hand is going to reach, oh my, Michelle's only reaching towards the uh, calf or the shin here. Can't quite make it to the ankle just yet. Let the head fall. Use that right hand to pull against left leg to rotate your upper body. Rotate that right shoulder underneath the left. Place one, both hands down. And come down to a six-point stance. Two hands, two knees, two feet. And we'll do our little race through here. So left hand will stay down. Right hand is going to open up. Oh, reach the back of that hand. Stay here for just a moment. Reach the right hand behind you. And then exhale, thread through, bring that right shoulder to the floor. Three more. Inhale as you open, exhale as you thread through. Inhale, open, exhale, thread. And last one. Inhale, open, exhale, thread through. Keeping that right shoulder on the ground, tent the fingers of the left hand and push those fingertips into the ground to try to stack left shoulder over right. And switch sides. Right hand stays down, left hand opens up as far as you can, and exhale, thread. Inhale, open, exhale, thread. Open and thread. And last one, inhale, open, reaching the back of that hand behind you, and exhale, thread. Tent the fingertips of the right hand and push them into the ground, stacking right shoulder over left.
And half kneeling. Right knee wants to stay down. Bring your left foot in front of you. And left hand is going to hold on to that right wrist and lengthen up towards the ceiling first and then over. If you don't want to be kneeling, you don't have to. You could be standing. You could bring that, curl the right toes under and bring that knee off the ground. But squeeze that right cheek wherever you are. And we'll switch sides. So left knee down, right leg forward, right hand around left wrist. Lengthen towards the ceiling first, then pull up and over, breathing into that left side body. Squeeze that left cheek wherever you are. And find some water and maybe a towel. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for playing. Good to see your faces this morning. Find some sunshine somewhere. <laughs>